One, two, three, four. Here we go. Action? Yeah, I say action. 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 Yes. <laughs> hey, it's Mike and John. Got it going on. Mike Marino, John King. On a Friday, we've got uh, we've got some special birthdays and anniversaries to talk about. We'll get to that. Uh, also coming up today, the great Bonnie Runyon. We've got our teacher of the day, and we'll talk to Rondo over at Torch 180. Lots of big things happening there. But first. Gigo News brought to you by Cooper and Binkley Jewelers. All right, here's what's going on. A plan is moving forward to redevelop a long-closed elementary school in Brighton. The city announced Thursday it's negotiated and approved a modified site plan for the West Village development to be located on the former Lindbaum Elementary School property. The proposed West Village project was initially denied by city council, citing concerns about the project's density and height. The developer and owner of the property jointly filed a lawsuit challenging the denial alleging constitutional claims related to due process and the unlawful taking of property. After much negotiation, according to a statement, the city was able to achieve a modified plan through a lawful consent judgment that addresses the concerns of the city and many residents, including a reduced density and modified two-story plan. The privately owned Limbaugh property has been vacant for over 10 years. It's been the subject of many trespass, neglect, and vandalism complaints to Brighton City Police. City officials say the modified plan allows the contamination on the property to be safely addressed and the property responsibly developed. A crash Wednesday in Tyrone Township sent one person to the hospital with serious injuries. The Livingston County Sheriff's Office reports deputies were dispatched just after 2 p.m. into a single vehicle serious injury rollover crash on northbound US 23 south of White Lake Road. A preliminary investigation indicates a 2006 Jeep Commander was northbound in the left lane of 23. The driver, a 25-year-old Saginaw resident, was traveling too fast for the wet road conditions. She stated the semi-truck next to her shifted in its lane, and as she tried to turn to the left a little, she lost control and spun out on the roadway through the median, striking the cable barrier that separates the southbound and northbound lanes. The vehicle then overturned and came to rest on its tires in the median. The rear seat passenger, a 60-year-old Saginaw resident who was not restrained, suffered serious injury and was taken by Livingston County Ambulance to Genesis Hospital for treatment. The driver and a front seat passenger were treated at the scene for minor injuries. The inside lane of northbound 23 was shut down for about two and a half hours for investigation and cleanup of the crash, which remains under investigation. And a local lawmaker's bill to help address the shortage of health care workers has been signed into law. House Bill 5089, sponsored by Republican Representative Ann Bolin of Brighton, modifies the requirements an applicant must meet to be granted registration as a nurse's aide by the Department of Licensing and Regulatory Affairs. Governor Whitmer, who signed the legislation into law on Thursday, said it adjusts training requirements without com uh, compromising the quality of training. She said that will help address the health care worker shortage. In signing the bill, Whitmer said all Michiganders deserve access to affordable, high-quality health care, and by allowing for more nurses' aides to enter the field and receive vital training, they're meeting the needs of the moment. And that's what's going on. And our look at news brought to you by Cooper and Binkley Jewelers, Brighton's preeminent jewelry store with a commitment to not only customer service, but also community involvement, honesty, professional, uh, professionalism, and of course, beautiful, exquisite merchandise. Mark and Barb Binkley pride themselves on offering something special for everybody and recognize that customer satisfaction is the sole purpose of their business. They offer a unique mix of exceptional quality jewelry value, all in a warm, engaging environment. So whether you're looking for custom-made jewelry or perhaps something from Simon G. Say it for me, John King. Simon G. Zagani, Cooper and Pinkley Jewelers on Main Street in downtown Brighton, Brighton, your first and only stop for quality, beautiful jewelry. I feel bad for Zagani. We don't really have a Zagani. Yeah. Zagani. The big Z. How about the big Z? The big Z? The big Z. The big Z. I don't, I don't know if Zagani would like that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know that Simon G likes me on Simon G. I think Simon G likes that. Yeah. I you mean, can't say G it's, like it's, it's got Simon little, Gah. Yeah. Well, no, no. It's you got to put the, 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 the it's, It gives them a hip quality there. Oh, well, yeah. Simon and G. there's nothing hipper Zagani than two guys in the basement 
say that's the name true. out, you know. I mean, <laughs> I'm sure that's I'm sure the epitome. That's oh, that's like Simon the, the knows. top shelf. Of no, he's like I've reached quality. the pinnacle now. <laughs> This is it. I can retire. Congratulations, Simon G. <laughs> and Zagani, and too. Zagani. Zagani, it's uh, not only jewelry, but it sounds like a fine sports car. <laughs> Do you have the Zagani uh, XG? Oh, I have an XG. Oh, no. Oh, it's got, an XLT Zagani. Oh, I've got the, uh, <laughs> got the uh, convertible. <laughs> Zagani convertible. It's it's the midlife crisis, <laughs> Zagani. John's driving. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have a couple of special announcements to make yeah, today. Yes, we do. All right. Uh, we have a uh, an anniversary. Congratulations to Mike and Joyce Hicks. Yeah. Celebrating 50 years. 50 years. 50 years of wedded bliss. Well, they've been married for 50 years. Let's put it that way. It, I it mean, over, over a, you know, let's face it. We, we're married. We know. Well, not. No. <laughs> Let me clarify. <laughs> We each have a significant. We other. each are not that there's anything wrong with that, but nonetheless, okay. I was I was at John's wedding, so yeah. I can verify that just because I was at his wedding, yeah. we you know, didn't get married. I wasn't at your wedding. No, you weren't. Hmm? I didn't even know yet. Well, that's probably. Right. <laughs> if I was, you're like, who's this guy? Get the hell out of here! At John's wedding, you had a yeah. bunch of radio people, and we all right. criticized criticizing the, my the DJ. DJ. Yeah, <laughs> we all said, "Oh, should have played Friday Night Girl, dude." <laughs> Truth <laughs> is, I had a pretty bad DJ. Was, yeah. There was about four of us yeah. that were ready to step in. And <laughs> I was take like, over. One more, I'm like, "Can you guys just fix <laughs> this, please?" All right, and uh, all right. happy 105th birthday yeah. to Glenn Bulemore. Yeah, World War II vet. Who is at uh, Wellbridge in Brighton? So yeah, happy birthday! Yeah, Glenn served in the 164th Infantry Division in the Southern Philippines. He was awarded a Bronze Battle Star, and again, he's celebrating his 105th wow. birthday today. And thank uh, you so much for your service. Yeah, and absolutely. Happy birthday! And if we make it to 105 and are still in this basement, <laughs> it'll probably smell real bad. Well, I cleaned it up. <laughs> I don't no, I'm talking about us. You know, I'm oh, okay. it'll probably be a combination of Old Spice. And uh, you're assuming it Ben Gay. <laughs> if this house is still standing, you know, <laughs> by the time we're 105, you know, we're talking yeah. uh, about 50 years down the road. Yeah. Podcasts will be a thing of the past, but you'll still be able to find ours on various locations. Oh, God, yeah. Whether it be YouTube, Facebook, if it's still around. We might own Facebook by then. Oh, but, sure. Uh, we're also on Spotify. Are we? As far as I know. Yeah, we are. Uh, SoundCloud. Yeah. RSS.com. We're everywhere. Oh, there's the alarm. That is the alarm. That's our that's our call to take medicine. <laughs> <laughs> Got to take my pills. Got my what is it? The diabetes. My, my rheumatoid medicine and I got the rheumatiz. <laughs> my diabetes. It's actually a teacher of the day today is uh, yeah, Jane God. Williams. Yeah. We were talking about Jane yesterday yeah. during the podcast, and uh, of course, part of our community spot. Hello. Hi, Hi Jane. Hi. Is, Hi. Hi, Jane. Hey, uh, hang on. You're, this is Mike and John from yeah. Mike and John Got It Going On. You're in the middle of a live commercial yeah. presented so, by John King. Yeah, so, so hold on, so, Jane. So hang on, Jane. Okay. Right. Community Spotlight is sponsored by Jordan Genso with the Genso team at Remax Platinum. As a community-focused real estate agent, he's once again spending the month of May doing what he has dubbed Main Street May. Each day he's using his Facebook page to highlight a different business on Main Street in Brighton, encouraging everyone to take a moment each day this month to support the businesses that build our community. People who interact with his post will have a chance to win a $10 gift card to the business. Yesterday, he stopped by Bourbons. So, and he hasn't left yet. No, no I'm just saying. <laughs> they swept him into the gutter. <laughs> All right, got to go. Closing time. All right, anyway. Uh, so find the post on his, his Facebook page, Jordan Genso, Community Serving, Community Realtor page. Your chance to win a gift card. All right, before we get to Jane, I'd like to apologize to Semi-Sonic, who sang Closing Time. For that rendition, Jane Williams, teacher at uh, Challenger Elementary School, our teacher of the day today as we celebrate National Teacher Month. Congratulations, Jane, and thanks for joining us today. Thank you. So we were talking about uh, how, how you're in charge of, uh, of Jump Rope for Heart. And after yesterday's show yesterday, I demonstrated invisible jump rope. Yes. I don't know if you caught that or not. But, uh, I it did is a, not, but that's yeah. the best way to jump rope. He, he, he showed great form. He used yeah. two cigars <laughs> to simulate the jump rope handles. So I'm sure that's, that's you know. Bet you never yeah. saw that before, have you? <laughs> no, not in a while. I, I no. think they kind of frowned upon that at school. Yeah. I would imagine Bringing so. cigars to school, not recommended. <laughs> no. <laughs> Especially no. elementary school. <laughs> so how did you get into uh, the Jump for Heart uh, uh, for the students? 
Um, actually, it started back when I was doing my student teaching, and my mentor teacher then mm-hmm. um, started it, and I just thought it was a great thing to do. Um, I think it's important for our students to give back, and that's an easy way for our kids to do it. So tell us about how what it's all about, Jump for Heart, uh, as far as is a fundraiser, as you said, give back. How does it all work? It is. It's a fundraiser for the American Heart Association. It's now called Kids Heart Challenge. Um, and it's a, the kids go and ask for donations. Um, and then based upon the donations they, they get, they, uh, that they raise for the American Heart Association, then there's an opportunity for them to get like uh, small little gifts back kind of as a, as a thank you. Yeah. Um, so it's a fun way. And we, because of, uh, for obviously lots of different reasons, but um, also our gym size, we've changed things and COVID's changed things. So we did, this year we've done it uh, where they, we would have separate events where they would um, come in at lunchtime and we would give them food and stuff. This year we changed it and any minute we just did it as part of our phys ed classes. Oh, nice. Cool. And so the jump roping, is it just straight up jump roping, different styles? I mean, because there's all kinds of different ways you can jump rope. Sure, yeah. Whatever they are, whatever they want to do. Um, they can do single rope, can do single rope with a partner, and different um, tricks and things that they've had. We've had the uh, Jumpin' All-Stars come in and, and teach the kids some different tricks and stuff um, that they can practice. Uh, it can be long rope, it can d- be double dutch. I just stand and watch and go, nice job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I can do well, that. You know, it was when, when my boys were younger, uh, I think it was a Disney Channel or something, had the, uh, the movies. Uh, yeah. about jump rope competition and how it, it really took off. And I think that really uh, kind of highlighted uh, to kids that, hey, this can be fun and it's pretty simple too. It's inexpensive as far as a sport goes or uh, just physical activity. It's pretty easy, something you can do with friends or on your own. So good yeah, stuff. absolutely. So what else do you do at Challenger Elementary? Uh, well, the phys ed teacher, I try to um, help out as any way that I can. Um, we do, uh, part of my, I guess, life philosophy is is giving back to the community and so we do um, I help with student council I help with lead teaching I help with um, just helping encouraging the kids to have a better lifestyle and um, one of the things we just got done with also is reaching higher um, you probably have heard about that program mm-hmm. before it's a program based out of Brighton um, and working to lead, help lead the kids to a stronger better lives well, you know, I guess it's, it's. I think it's interesting that uh, when I think back to when I was in elementary school, let's just say Jimmy Carter was president, just to give you, <laughs> just to give you a, a timeline. Yeah. You know, I think, and I, from my perspective, gym teachers, phys ed teachers, they were. It seemed as if they were um, monolithic, like they just that's they just had this one task and that was it, and they kind of had a stereotype. I guess that's the word I'm looking for. Um, and yet, it's it's it it's obvious now talking to you, and, and from what we know that you know, in, in a sense, there's so much more that you do than just uh, do physical ed, exactly. which is important, obviously. Uh, but you, you 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 know, obviously, there's there you have to be so many different things now. I'm sure all teachers uh, have to do now that you've got Absolutely. to kind of have this broader based thing where you're sort of involved in all these different activities. Absolutely, and you know, back in the day when. When we were in, in high school and elementary school, um, it was roll the ball out and go and play. Right. Yeah. And my, my philosophy is um, I'm going to introduce you to as many possible different opportunities of activities so that you can hopefully grab onto something that you will enjoy for many, many years. And I want to create that base in the elementary school. Now, you're also the Howell Varsity Volleyball Coach, right? I am. Yeah, so... uh true. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, working with elementary kids, but then you're also, you know, uh, you know working with high school kids in a, in a very competitive, uh, you know, atmosphere. Oh, yeah. That's a, that's a, that's a, you kind of have to shift gears on that. Very much so. Um, and sometimes it's in less than 30 minutes that shift goes, <laughs> but... Um, it's, it's fun. I really do enjoy both ends of it because I've got the little kids that still think I can make some silly, stupid joke and they still laugh at me. 
<laughs> and then I have the older kids that, you know, we can have some serious heart to heart conversations and um, it's a fun, fun change and fun dynamic to have. Yeah. It's all the times, but fun. Yeah. I would imagine, yeah, making the transition between and I wonder so do, I wonder if like do you come out of the competitive end where you're working with the, the varsity team and then you come down to the sixth the, graders, let's you know, go. We're, we're, we're doing push ups. You got second graders, you know, yes, coach. <laughs> Sometimes well, thankfully it's the other way. Right. Thankfully, that's what I figured. I First, but um, yeah, there's definitely times when it's a challenge, and I tell my my high school kids some of the stories, and uh, the, the the kids come up with um, at the elementary school, and just the fun with it, um, and they're like, oh yeah, I remember you made me sit in the corner because I did blah blah blah, and yeah. it was uh, like, yep, you did, I remember that, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did a lot of blah 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 uh, back in the day. I actually ex I excelled at blah blah blah. Um, <laughs> Let me ask you, you know, how, how long have you been teaching phys ed? This is year twenty. Yeah. Okay. So so how has the curriculum, if you will, changed from when you started? Because we were talking the other day about uh, elementary school and and things we used to do, whether it be riding on scooters and playing uh, a version of hockey, so to speak, on scooters with a ball. Um, right. You know, like polo, if you will, Marco Polo kind of thing, or um, uh, dodgeball. I'm sure that's probably not a, not around anymore. Oh, we do variations on that. You just throw some twist in there, like in order to win, you knock the pins down at the other end or something like that. Right. Um, I still enjoy dodgeball myself personally, but um, it, it, it has changed. And I think a lot of it goes to that the kids don't, um, like you mentioned, we, we were out playing until the street light came right on. yeah and now the kids for whatever reason for lots of different reasons they right. don't and i know that there's many kids that uh, when they go home they sit and watch video games or play something um not being physically active yeah not and getting a group of kids really together and, yeah not getting not not playing yeah. hockey in the street or uh, getting well, a, a football game a, to a touch football game and that gives added that emphasis to what you do because I, I would imagine in many instances that's maybe going to be the only exercise they're going to get for the day for some of those kids yes absolutely yeah uh yes. well you know it, it's great work that you're doing and uh and we want to salute you as your fellow teachers and the Howell education association have done uh, nominating you for uh, teacher of the day so congratulations uh, Thank you very much. for that yeah and also we want to send along our sympathies because we understand that uh, your brother-in-law is Jeff Dehanen's yeah, yes, yeah. we're that, really yeah. sorry about that um, <laughs> no he, he's a pretty awesome guy and I know you guys know that but I know that he's going to be listening to this and, and going to be um, knowing that he's being um, poked at and jo joshled at with it yeah, he'll, be, well, so. he'll be bragging to his friends we oh. know <laughs> <laughs> you're right, you're right. well Jane Williams thanks for joining us this morning a lot of fun keep up the great work Thank you very much. Right. Thanks for having me. Right. Good luck with day. the volleyball teams, too. We appreciate it. Thanks. All right. Have Thank a great you. day. All right. Yeah. Once Bye -bye. again, our Community Spotlight uh, sponsor is Jordan Genso, the Genso team at Remax Platinum. Find them on Facebook, Jordan Genso, Community Servant, Community Realtor. And uh, I want to say right now, I'm uh, highly offended by Jordan. Do not appreciate what, what, what his have? comparison of my mustacheless face with one of the gremlins. Uh, I don't know if you saw that post. I, I, you know, now that you yeah. mentioned it, I kind of yeah. went by it. I, yeah. I tried to ignore uh -huh. it from yeah. you. Yeah, I didn't see it. I, uh, yeah, I didn't <laughs> I see did. it at all. Uh huh. You mean this one right here? Yeah. yeah. And there so, was somebody that compared you to a Ninja Turtle without a mask. Yeah. Who did that? Yeah. Who? What a hole? Who did what that? a hole did that? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, thanks a lot for that. In the great, world. you know, Mer first Mer I got my yeah. <laughs> Yeah, right. Did I do that? <laughs> exactly. Another <laughs> Urkel moment here. All right. Well, anyway. Uh, and, uh, good one thing he's an advertiser. <laughs> Who, Urkel? <laughs> All right. No. Uh, we're, we're looking for a sponsorship from Urkel. Hey, in our trivia question, some great answers. Yes, there were night. some interesting answers. 25% of men, so one in, one in uh, four men, said they won't date a woman with this. What was your first thought? A mustache. A husband? <laughs> oh, by the way, my mom likes you better with the mustache. So. She likes it better with the mustache. With the mustache. Right. And they say, Maybe well, we should start keeping a tote board. <laughs> <laughs> you know. For and against the stash. <laughs> so 25% of men say they won't date a woman with this. Let's get some of that. Boyfriend or husband was, was a pretty common answer. Yeah. Well, An yeah. annoying laugh. Yeah. An annoying laugh. And the first thing I thought of was uh, was friends. Janice. Janice from Friends. Janice. Bing a ling a ling. <laughs> My little bing-a-ling-a-ling. -a -ling -a -ling. Our um, friend Jeff Dehanen said yeah. drive a pickup. Right. 
Uh, now, remember in, when, when in the 90s when pickup trucks first started getting kind of popular amongst the um, pop the average population. It used to be pickup trucks were like, oh, you're a construction it was, Or it's like a farm a lawn, thing. Yeah, yeah right. It, it was farmer construction, that kind of thing. You it had a practical a purpose to have a pickup truck. But right. then the little splash trucks came along and right. girls well, now in cowboy some of these, boots and short shorts. Well, now some of these pickup what? trucks, it's it's a Cadillac on a pickup <laughs> chassis. And you're like, really? Well, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's kind of the thing. They're, they're so luxurious. It's like, yeah. were you really going to put lumber in the bag of that <laughs> yeah. You hauling bricks with that? Yeah. Doubtful. Uh, our friend Ross said, any Mike and John got it going on merch? Says, I can't compete when she's already got men like them in her life. That is tough, Ross. Yeah. We apologize, Ross. Yeah. By the way, you can get your Mike and John merch at oh. mikeandjohnpodcast.com. You Go can? to the merch section. Oh, that's true. Sure. Yeah, sure. It's easy, affordable, and you can order what you like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you said boyfriend. Yeah. Uh, our, our friend Steve DeBruin at the dial put that. An ex-husband. Sure. Well, an ex-husband. That could be right. even... Yeah. I mean, when you yeah, think about it. Yeah, because it, it could be tough there. Herpes was a popular guest, too. <laughs> Thank you, yeah, Brandon. Not, I, and see, <laughs> well, Brandon, Brandon and Susie. Yeah, well, Brandon is he's known for those kind of answers. Yeah. I'm like, okay, Brandon, I roll my eyes. And then Susie, our friend Susie... She also bought herpes. I'm like, well, okay, I guess this Maybe is... Maybe there's probably a website for that. I guess there's a concern. Dating with herpes. Uh, kids was a popular answer. You know, some guys don't want the uh, the baggage, I guess you would say. Um, cats was another... Nobody said dogs. There is a... Thing. Men would not... <laughs> there, there is a dating with herpes. Of course there is. It's called positivesingles.com. <laughs> hairy legs was another guess, which was pretty funny. You won't date a woman with hairy Sorry. legs. That <laughs> hey, winter wasn't over yet. Uh, a gun. <laughs> Girls with guns. Uh, too much debt. A tattoo. But our answer was actually facial piercings. Congratulations mm. to Kimberly. She was the only one that got that one right. You know, would you date a girl with a ring through her nose? But what about? I if mean, it's just a little. For, diamond, it's different. Different things for but different if people. If it's a big old gaudy thing, maybe. I mean, not. you got the, sometimes you get the little stud in the nose or whatever, and that yeah. can you know, that's cute. I agree. A nose ring to me doesn't do it, but for other people, yeah, they liked it. Now, the thing that always gets my attention are the big gauges. Yeah, yeah. those you know, are usually an ear thing. Yeah, where it's and like, and the big, you know, like, your ear is not going to stop growing, so that <laughs> gauge hole is. Gonna I mean, get sometimes big. you see, you're like. This is the thing. Your ears and your nose are the only things yeah. on your body that continually grow whether you like it or not. Yeah. So if you got a big schnoz or big ears. <laughs> big schnoz. <laughs> big schnoz. <laughs> hey, a look schnoz. at old Bring schnoz. <laughs> a schnoz is the nose. The old schnozola. <laughs> As our friend uh, JB would say. Yes. All right. I want to thank Dan's, uh, Dan's PC Solutions. For recommending the printer that we've been using yeah. this week, it's it's been it's been a real nice addition to the Mike and John got it going on. It has. I SD. just did before you got here this morning. I printed up some things uh, off our brand new Gigo yeah. printer. You know, you're using more than your allotted ink. I haven't it's used our. Any ink. It's our allotted. Oh ink. no, it's not. This is news ink. Yeah. All right. Well, it is only hooked up to we're, my laptop, not yours. <laughs> I know. I'm over here. Why you can. <laughs> I don't know. I can't print it. You just don't know how to do it right. I got to call Dan. Yeah, you better call Dan at Dan's PC Solutions, of course, run by Dan and Amber McMillan, husband and wife team, who are providing IT and computer services and support for residents and small businesses in Livingston County for more than 10 years. And in fact, I probably will call Dan later today uh, to have him help clear my browser history now that I've been looking up herpes dating sites. Some people might question why is that happening? <laughs> my, my fingers are going, wait a minute. And it's a good thing you're calling Dan at Dan's PC Solutions because Dan's not running Bob's solutions. No. He's running Dan. That's true. And, you know, I want to, I, I I don't oh, know. That, you know. Dan can't really, I'm sure, divulge this, you know, uh, computer but, repair client privilege. Oh, But yeah. the, people bring in their computers, I'm sure, to be, you know, oh, it's wiped. not working. you got to wipe them. Or whatever. And I'm just in the course shows. of him, you know, oh, you just, things pop through. up and you're like, okay. Yeah. You know. Dan, why does John keep getting those Cialis ads on his <laughs> on his Facebook feed? Because I was looking why up did... dating with herpes. That's why. <laughs> why, is there, why is there not a Herpes Anonymous club <laughs> popping up on, on John's Facebook page? Hello, my name is John. <laughs> All right. So Dan's PC Solutions providing support for your average home user, herpes sufferer, 
Just if you're not super tech savvy. Just a salve like that. It's just chicken pox in a <laughs> no, different location. Dan is not going to recommend any kind of salve or anything like that. That's not his. What <laughs> not he will thing, do no. is he will repair your computer and make That's sure right. it's running at top notch. He's got sledgehammers in case you just want to get rid of that thing. <laughs> Thank you, know, you, Dan. I have to wonder if Dan ever just goes, yeah, I would burn this if I were you. I'd... <laughs> he's, he's got a can of gasoline and a lighter right. in the back. Your best solution with for a this. With a fire extinguisher. Okay, look, this, good to go. Look, your Tandy is not going to cut it anymore, okay? <laughs> Tandy. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> Dan's PC Solutions, they're there they're, uh, they're to help stop in, see Dan and Amber, and, of course, say hi to uh, Ziggy. Cutest little shih tzu. Yes. Dan's PC Solutions in the former Livingston County Airport building on Grand River and Howell. They're open Monday through Friday, 9 to 3. Call them, 517-579-0975 or online, danspcsolutions.com. And uh, if you're going to bring Ziggy a treat, please call Dan first. Make sure it's an approved treat for That's Ziggy. True. Yeah, I don't know what Shih Tzu. I don't know, I don't what, know what, what Ziggy likes. Huh? Uh, I mean, well, you should know. I don't. He's a very friendly dog. I, I, I didn't have any... He does come sniff me. He's like, mmm, roast beef. Mmm, <laughs> 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 bacon. <laughs> Dogs like bacon and peanut butter. Right. The dog just starts licking me. <laughs> Are we calling the great Bonnie Runyon or Ron? I first? believe, uh, no, this is Bonnie Runyon time. <laughs> it's Runyon time. It's Runyon time. <laughs> That's Bonnie bom, with a bom, B. Bom, bom, bom. We should have a theme. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, and uh, we, we, we got to wonder yeah. if Bonnie's doing okay after that shaving incident yeah, last weekend. It's true. During the walk for warmth. She is the one that created this. She led the way with the razor. Good morning. Hey Hi, Bonnie. I was concerned. I thought, oh, Lord, have mercy. Somebody's in the hospital. No. Oh, it was just a little cut that you got no. John with. It was okay. <laughs> he, he needed a little mental counseling, yeah. uh, but uh, he is okay and has yeah. survived. Bonnie, I want you to know, I don't blame you because it was Mike that was urging you on going, yeah, yeah. shove that clipper in harder. Dig deep. <laughs> <laughs> Really? You know, yeah, it's, a, really. it's what have it's, you been up to? Yeah. Oh, this, that, helping people with the moving sale and oh. shaving somebody's mustache off. <laughs> well, that'll do. Like and PT and yeah. You know what? On Monday, I get to go back to a normal. Oh, life. okay. Okay. Yeah. It's understandable after having come that close to this mustache, he needed a week off. Yeah, we, some, we understand. It, it's kind of yeah. like we're on a break. Yeah, I need a break yeah. here. I need a little time, guys. But the nice thing is, Bonnie, when you go to MikeAndJohnPodcast.com, you can catch all our podcasts in order if you like. Yeah. So you can play catch up if you're just sitting around having a cup of coffee or something. Oh, yeah. You know, talking with the kids. Invite the family over. And that will happen. You know, maybe a Mike and John night at the Runyons out on the farm. Well, the farm's gone. Um, mm. Well, at Grandma's place. Boy, someone's really <laughs> bumming around for an invite over here. <laughs> no, I'm talking about the podcast. Yeah. You, you know, we'll, we'll be there in spirit. Right, right. There you yeah. go. There you go. Yes, yes. So we do want to thank you and your, your son, Tim, for coming out to the walk for one. And, and his wife, yeah. Yeah, and his wife, too. So that was uh, it was a lot of fun. You well, guys. you know, it was really nice meeting John's wife, and I'm looking forward to meeting yours, Mike. Well, we, yeah, we, we will have that. She's back now from moving my son back from Denver. So. She doesn't exist. <laughs> Mike's been making her up all these years. <laughs> <laughs> hey, like you did in other places? <laughs> <laughs> hey, now. <laughs> I, hey, I have a half a memory once in a while. Oh, oh yeah, well, okay. <laughs> right. That's good. So, yeah, so you said you're a moving sale. I mean, you have some friends that are asking you to help them move. Is that what was You uh... know, the, I offer, I love garage sales. Yeah. I don't go to them anymore because the Lord knows I have too much stuff. But yeah. uh, mm. so when I can help somebody out when they host one, oh, okay. move a sale, you know, yeah. That could be a new business opportunity for you, you know, Bobby. Yeah, I mean, when you look yeah. at it, you know, people have people that'll that'll shop for them. They have them that uh, will walk their dogs for them. You could run someone's garage, right? Thing. Just like put, a garage Uber right, just, kind of thing. Exactly. Just put You're, your crap out in the garage. Bonnie will show up and sell it for really? you. Really? There you go. There you go. <laughs> you know, and, and you know, in your garage sale experience, Bonnie, have you ever? You know, been at one and going, well, they really don't know what that's worth and, and taking advantage of buying mm -hmm. something at a, a lower price and saying, I know I can either give this to no. somebody and won't cost me as much or or no. resell it. No? No. 
Yeah. I yeah. only, I mean, when I used to go to them all the time, it was just for things that I might like. Yeah, you know? right, yeah. Do, I'm not do, do, do. for that kind of stuff. I mean, come up. You know right, right. But sometimes you go to a garage sale and people have the stuff priced like it's retail. Like right. it's brand new. You're like, this is a garage sale. You can't be charging full price for this thing. Yeah, you, you want to do that, you go to Marketplace. Yeah. And yeah. Craigslist. I mean, sometimes you see these over, you know, you're like, okay, I don't think you get the whole notion of a garage sale. It's like, I need to get this stuff out of my, off my property. Yeah. Well, and speaking of off your property... Uh, Cro-Maine Library in Heartland has got their book sale going on yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Do you have any recommended and, reads, Bonnie? Oh, no, you don't want to know that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Cro-Maine uh, book sale uh, through Saturday. Yes. All right. Are you working well, that one, too? Yes. Listen. <laughs> okay. Then they have Sunday from 12 to 1. Sunday from 12 to um, 1. Come after church. Come bring your own boxes and take as many books as you want for nothing. Oh, oh it's like that's the clearance there. Well. A BYO box. <laughs> bring your own box and, and take what you want. Yes. I mean, and before that, the books, paperbacks are 50 cents and hard, bo- hard books are a dollar. I mean, right. maybe you should sell your books there. Leave my yeah, books alone. Right. I'm, sorry. I'm talking about your. What are you? Have you been well, talking time. to my wife? No, I'm talking about your 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 book. Oh, you the book wrote. that. Oh, oh, oh. Well, yeah. these are these are used books. Mine wow, clearly. They're, they're new. You can full, sell them at new price. Full retail. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> people lining <laughs> up. Not, we do have book people that come and do that. Oh, okay. okay. Is that frowned upon at, at a book sale from oh, the no, 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 no. Because no. these, these books are all donated to the library. Right. Yeah. right. All right. So, but what if they're selling the books? They won't have anything for people to read. Uh, no, no. These are just, no, no. The library downstairs is oh, fully library. Go in and rent. And... Oh, okay. Oh, I All right, just checking. Yeah. I just want to make sure the library's not empty. No, no, of course not. There's nothing there. Yeah, no, yeah. no, no. All right. Well, Bonnie, good luck at the, uh, the book sale. As always, we appreciate checking in with you each and every Friday. You have a, uh, a wonderful weekend. We'll talk to you next week. Yes, but you're not done yet. I, oh. I want one, one, my, one of my words of wisdom. Oh, okay. yes, yes, the words of wisdom. Words of wisdom. You want to live your life in such a way that when your feet hit the floor in the morning, Satan shudders and says, oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> we want Satan to say, oh, crap, when your feet hit the floor. Yeah. Yep, he, he's awake. Well, I'm pretty sure that's what happens every morning when you get up, Bonnie. Yes. All right, Bonnie, take care. You too. All right, we'll talk Bye to you on. next week. All right, the great Bonnie Runyon joining us yes. here on the... On with the words, of words of wisdom. Words of wisdom. Maybe that's a, maybe that's a new segment there. Words of I, wisdom I, I from Bonnie. I think that's what we told her she could yeah. do and we forgot. But well, luckily she remembered. Well, we're getting old. Yeah, we are. Yeah. Right. It's a good thing we remember that Firehouse Doors is the main sponsor of Mike and John Got It Going On. I was just going to remind you of yeah. that. In fact, they were the very first sponsor. The OG. So blame them. <laughs> <laughs> it's their fault. Uh, but they've been serving Livingston County residents for uh, 24 years. Family owned. They strive to treat each customer like family. I am a customer and I can tell you get exemplary customer service from veteran owned. Mike, a proud U.S. Air Force veteran. And for the past 21 years, they've been Livingston County's only authorized distributor for CHI overhead doors. They're also your one stop shop for residential, commercial, and rolling steel overhead door needs. And uh, you can give them a call today, 810-599-7480. And when you buy a garage door and opener package, Firehouse Doors will upgrade Mike and John listeners to a belt drive battery backup opener, no extra cost. That includes a built-in MyQ camera system. So you can see what's going on in your garage. What's going on in this garage? What's happening in here? And that's a $275 savings, and that oh, offer that is good through June 15th. And I wanted to say, thank God my parents did not have a MyQ camera system when I was here. <laughs> <laughs> there would have been some that discipline would have, that going would have not on. been very good. Yeah. What's what are you doing in the what garage? What is going on in the garage? Nothing. What's happening? Out Nothing. Here? We used to build forts in the garage. In the garage? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Well, it was just a daytime thing. I, I take get, an old we, refrigerator take, box oh, and <laughs> make a fort. <laughs> you're playing inside the refrigerator. You know, <laughs> no. Don't do no, that. You take like a box like yeah. that or maybe an old wash machine box my brother right. would roll around in the yard in. So... <laughs> You know, I would laugh at him. Oh, that's but, nice. That's sweet. <laughs> but it had to come out of the garage first. Right. So we would go make forts in the woods back of the house. 
but somebody lives there. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> at your old house. Well, I, I thought you were talking here. No, no, no. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it's funny when you're... It, the memory, of course, is, oh, we built a tree house. And it was like, we took a plank oh. of wood. And a couple two-by-fours. And, and to us, it was the Taj Mahal. Oh, yeah. You're just you up know. in a tree on a plank. And we're, we're like three feet off the ground. But, yeah. it, you know, it, we're 100 feet off the ground in this huge 14-room complex. It's like, it's a plank and a board. Three feet off the ground. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, maybe five, six feet. But, no, but still. There were no walls. Yeah. No. Yeah. Just a board there. Up in the tree. Right. Hanging out with your buddies. Yeah. Some magazines. <laughs> what? You had um, magazines in your fort? You had a cool fort. <laughs> oh, yeah. I had, to, I had to get them out of the garage. My parents are going to get that IQ camera system. <laughs> <laughs> it's Torch 180 time. We're calling Rhonda Callahan to see what's going on at Torch 180. They have their big grand opening coming up very, very soon. Yeah. We'll find out more about Good morning, Mike and John. Good morning, morning, Rhonda. Welcome back. Thank you. I'm well. How are you? Good. So you, you were out in uh, California? I did go out to California, oh, yeah. Lucky you. So, yeah, I mean, I have most of my extended families out there. Mm -hmm. And so I was visiting family. And then, of course, you know, we've got Torch LA going on. How's Torch um, LA going, you know, going? Yeah, uh, I mean, the, it was so big here. And I, I, I know, what, about a year, year and a half ago? Yeah, you extended it out to the West Coast. and uh... Yeah. So, basically, COVID has been really tough on Torch out there. Right. <laughs> so... California, especially the Los Angeles area, I mean, you just, it's just a very, very crowded city. And so um, there's still a lot of um, lockdowns and, you know, still a lot of uh, trying to avoid the social gathering in certain instances and things like that. So basically, there's three locations that are getting served out there, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, but, and there t there's talk of um, starting two more. But um, there's also talk of a food truck, but they're still waiting because they really don't want to. Trader Joe's and Lawrence and everybody doesn't really want to plunge into it if we if they really can't take it out. So. And Lawrence, we're talking about Lawrence Jackson. Yes, Lawrence yeah. Jackson. Yeah. yeah, he's heading up the um, really the Urban Torch Division. <laughs> it's your West doing. Coast, <laughs> the West Coast it's Division. On, it's the West Coast, but he's also been very. He's consulting a lot as we're talking about moving out towards Ypsilanti and Detroit and, yeah. and out that way. I mean, he really has a, a pretty um, significant, um, well, definitely very good understanding of what life's like in uh, poverty-stricken areas where there are uh, a large population of uh, black individuals. And sure. so um, that's kind of his expertise, which yeah, is no. not mine at all. So he no, is very that, much a great consultant for that. Right. It's, it's great. Different communities have different needs. <clears throat> and so it's great, to, you know, like you said, to have the insight of somebody who can provide that so that you are providing the right services at the right place for the right people. So. Well, and that's always been, like, it's never been my in intention to be, like, you know, the white savior going to go around and save the whole, everybody, feed everybody. It's always been every torch has to look like the neighborhood that it's in. And so right. if we can't get volunteers from that area, then we, I, I won't even start it until this. So Ypsilanti's kind of been a slow start because we're just trying to find the right people who live there, who know the needs in, in that type of thing. And so that's the, that's the same thing that has happened with Lawrence. And even as, you know, he starts to look at different areas that they might go into with at least being able to distribute groceries because the need is so, so big. Right. Um, he's he's making sure that he's got people that are in within those communities um you know which is the whole point i mean you can serve so much better if you you're part of it and you know really what the needs are or how it feels to be in that situation so, right so it's not like it's a it's it's a franchise opportunity where you think like you know they're all the same wherever they're at you know oh no in this right. you right like you, said, you, you you adapt it to uh the particular neighborhood or community that it's located in and that makes a lot of sense right yeah, exactly. And I mean, the food truck that he's talking about, he's like, I mean, I got to have music and I got to have loud music, you know? And we're like, oh my gosh, the neighborhood's where and they do not want us coming in there blaring loud music. But he's like, no, I just know this is going to be the perfect fit. Right. So, you know, I, every community is different. Right. And so, you know, you might you need to fit or you just look like you're just trying to tell them how to live their lives. And that's mm -hmm. not what we're all about. No, and, uh, and and that's why we love you over there at Torch 180. Uh, Mike mentioned, you know, of course, you've got the big grand opening there at the Torch 180 facility in Fowlerville. That's coming up on June 11th. Yes. And, yes. Uh, yeah, how's that shaping up? I'm really excited for that. We had a little bit of disappointing news with some of the construction. We know that it's not all going to be done by then. But we are going to have a lot done, and we are still going to celebrate our grand opening because it's time. 
and we're so excited and, and ready and I'm excited to have you guys there um, I'm thankful Pizza Box is sponsoring you so mm. Um, I think that's pretty cool. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Look or, forward to hopefully uh, it yeah, we, we kind of thought that you might be just putting us to work on the stuff that needs right. to be finished. <laughs> that's what we thought. We thought we were going <laughs> to. You want it done right. We are going to so. come in overhauls and you know, ready to, <laughs> get to work. Oh, I, you want to oh. work on the deck? John, John, you know, you put a hard helmet on John, he oh, can look yeah. like Bob the Builder. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> well, Bob the Builder, after he let himself go. and <laughs> Well, he wore overalls <laughs> and right. had a hard hat on. He <laughs> said, yes, we can. Bob the Builder, when he's middle aged, <laughs> bitter. <laughs> I remember the kids are there. <laughs> Build it and they will come, and that's what's happening at Torch One Eighty. It's going to be great. We're we're looking forward to it, and it's you know, believe it or not, we're only we're only about three weeks away yeah. here, so it's coming up it's quick. Fast. You know. it is. And we should remind folks, yeah. So the what they're all working towards is putting on this patio edition on the back, and people can have a lovely outdoor area that's uh, going to be accessible. I think it's going to totally transform what you do over there. Oh, it truly is. And we're actually going to have a really nice um, eating area out front as well. Oh, and right. So okay. So it's just going to be, I think, just all over, especially when the weather's nice. It's just going to be, it's going to be super cool. And the students are so excited. Yeah. I mean, we just got the classroom redone this past week. It's absolutely beautiful. And, of course, another volunteer stepped up and helped us with that. And so, um, yeah, so it's been, it's just pretty amazing because they are very, they get very overcome and overwhelmed and just like, like, oh my gosh, all these people, because I'm constantly telling them, these people care about you. That's why they do this. That's right. why they step up and help, because they care about you. And a lot of these guys just have not felt that. They've not felt that from our society. Yeah. Well, and that's, I mean, that's really the special mission that you have at Torch 180 is to provide that, but also practical skills, life skills, work skills yes. for these folks. Uh, and, and that really does make a difference for everybody. So and, you know, now you're still doing the mayhem is still on the menu. Oh yeah. We're still on to mayhem. Yep. We've introduced cowbells now. <laughs> so cowbell. we, More really cowbell. They know a mayhem challenge is coming. <laughs> All right. So, so what is that? So what is the mayhem? No, <laughs> the cowbell. The cowbell. Is the that cowbell? So basically we go in the kitchen and we ring it super loud. And oh, it's an actual cowbell. Oh, okay. I thought it was like a menu item. I was like, oh, that sounds delicious. <laughs> I'll, I'll have two of the cowbells to go. I'd like a cowbell with ranch, please. Yeah. All right. we, a, we've got yeah. uh, we've got the uh, the hopper out. Yeah. Or the the old laundry basket. It's a hopper. It's a hopper. It's not a laundry not, basket. No, it's this not is a not a laundry no. basket. It's got an official Mike and John sticker on it. <laughs> it just does. to show you. <laughs> okay. All right. So re reaching in, we'll find out who gets lunch for two at Torch One Eighty this week. Our All winner right. is, that's, that's the actual paper that John drew out. Yes, it is. The entry. Congratulations to Corinne Zakos. Congratulations, yeah. Corinne. So, Corinne Zakos, I hope I'm pronouncing your last name correctly, but Corinne, you have won Lunch for Two from Torch 180. All right, Rhonda, congratulations that's to awesome. Corinne, Thank and uh, we will talk to you again next week. Rhonda, thanks for joining us from Torch 180. Sounds good. Have a great weekend. All right. Say hi to everybody over there for us. I definitely will. All right. Take bye. care. It is great. You know, obviously what uh, Rhonda does over there at Torch 180 and all the volunteers as well. It's not just Rhonda. She'd be the first to tell you. Uh, but, you know, having this educational mission, and uh, that's what they do, education at Torch 180. So uh, it's sort of a perfect tie-in to remind folks about the Hall Education Association uh, building futures together and of course all the guests we've had on this month and we will again next week uh, different teachers in the Howell District uh, who have been uh, uh, nominated uh, as examples of teaching excellence by their HEA colleagues. The Howell Education Association serves its membership through collaboration and advocacy at the district, county, and state levels with the goal of supporting teachers in their professional efforts in local schools and classrooms. The Howell Education Association and local teachers working together for student success. I'm not going to give the lineup for next week. You're not, but no, no. no. Well, I'm, well, I'm you know, not because it's a surprise at this point. We, they, they, we have to stay on our toes. <laughs> we we do have to stay on our toes, <laughs> but we will have another teacher on Monday. Yes, we will. So congratulations to those so far yeah. and those that are yet to get the call from Mike and John for being yeah. our teacher of the day. <laughs> yet to get, get the to call. get the, it's like calling you up from the minors. Yeah. We say, oh, you got the mic. Send in the lefty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting the call. <laughs> Do they do that anymore? Yeah, they, they do. Just... I see him. I see him. Well, okay. yeah. I, I guess it's different styles. And then John starts playing. Like... You know, it's kind of like it's uh, my <laughs> no, friend. No, no, not you. Yeah, you know, my friend Mark, uh, who is a big baseball player, loves baseball. He, was, he could throw that speed ball. He could. By he it. really could. Yeah, and he'll tell uh, you that. Too. He was umpiring this past weekend, and I asked him. I said, "So, do you have like an umpire style? 
Like, how do you call somebody out? You're out. You gotta have you're a you gotta have there. a thing, a gimmick. Yeah. You can't just be like, you're out. <laughs> Hit the road. Yeah, I mean, you know, you could do a hit the road. Strike three, hit the road. (laughs) He was working on it. I don't know how he came up with it, but what would your style be? I don't know. You know, when I was a kid, and this is really kind of weird, there was uh, a friend of my cousin's, they were older cousins, his name was Paul King. And as I was... No relation. No, it was no relation. But he he was really, he was an umpire, and he would come out and tell me, you know, you're right on with that one. You know, those kind of things, you know, it's, it's, okay. it was really interesting, but he was really into it and he would, he would get right. that, you're out of there. You got to ring, you know, ring him up. Yeah. You got to ring him up. Isn't, isn't that the phrase? He really rang him up. He did. So, you know, it's, you're out uh, of there. Now maybe there's something in the contracts that say umpires can't steal the stage. Right. You know, because they're, they're more under the microscope now. That's true, but I mean, if you, you really get a showboat, on you. if you get a showboat of an you know, umpire. Let's say you get that umpire that's really into it and going, you're out, they're going, we want to challenge that call, and then, right. then it gets overturned and like, yeah, yeah, I guess like an idiot. You have it. to do the reverse of that now. You know, <laughs> do it back. But I'd like to see like an kind umpire. Kind of traffic cops. I'd like to see an umpire do like the curly shuffle or something, you know. <laughs> whoop, 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 whoop. You know, you're Missed out. Missed by that much. Yeah. So, just an idea. Yeah. Of course, that's why we're not umpires. No, How do we get to calling up from the minors to that? No, I we'll, don't know. Yeah, well, it doesn't take much. Uh, all right. Before we get to the two-cent history lesson, if you haven't opened up your pool, if you're a pool owner. Hey, I'm a pool the, owner. Have you opened up your pool? I have opened up my pool. John didn't open up his You know, pool. I did not Roman's open up Roman's pool. pools opened up John's they did. pool just like they did mine. Yeah. And they, they told me, they said, yours was a lot cleaner than King's. Yeah. That's what they said, John. I don't think they did. I don't you think know, they you did. Don't think they said no. They said you I were don't think wormier. so. They said King's Pool is much wormier than yours. <laughs> no, I don't think they did. No, I don't think they did. <laughs> My, we'll never know. Yeah. Unless we stop into Romans either That's in Howell or Brighton and ask, hey, whose pool was wormier? Because <laughs> 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 we've discussed the pool of worms yeah. and still can't find anything to do with them other mm. than throw them. No, you got to threaten. You got to threaten. You got to get rid of them. I'm sorry, sorry, it's nastiness. But that's why you hire Romans to come in and take care of the nastiness when you open your pool. And then during the summer, of course, maintaining, making sure you have a quality, balanced water so you can enjoy it uh, with friends. I love the lab. Don't you wish you could go work the lab? You know, that kind of does remind me of Quincy when I go. It does. They get the the little (laughs) petri dish thing there, and then and then they 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 kind of they put in a syringe, they squirt out a little, and they put it in the little machine, and it whirls around, and you're going, okay, what's going on in there? What's it going to (laughs) say? I hope it's balanced. I hope it's balanced. Oh, be balanced. DraftKings. (laughs) What are the odds? (laughs) (laughs) Look at Caesars. (laughs) I want the over under on this. I want the over under on my potassium. (laughs) Uh, and then John's <laughs> pulling more worms. Does pool even have Get potassium? Get your parlay back. It has potassium. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. See, this is why I go to Romans. If, you got if, if it was on me, I'd be like pouring potassium, and they'd be like, what are you doing? It needed more vitamin B. <laughs> so, yeah, Romans, uh, Romans pools and supplies, fast, friendly service, pool expertise, and quality maintenance. Give them a call today in Howell at 517 545 4555 or in Brighton, 810 588. 4460, Romans Pool Supplies and Services. It's your pool's best defense. All right, before we get to today's two cent history lesson, apparently there was a correction, so to speak. Yes, there from was. From yesterday's. There do you was. have that I here do. In, the, in our email bag? We heard from Michelle. Which was printed on our printer. It was printed on Dan's PC <laughs> Solutions. <laughs> All right, so let's, uh, let's get to the correction. Right. Well, it was just, I don't know if it was a correction or it was an a, It was a notation. I know, okay. A a by, the, by the way. Oh, a BTW. Yeah, it, was, it was a BTW. Yeah. Uh, we heard from Michelle who said, "Part uh, per one of your two cent history lessons this week, the celebrated jumping frog of Calaveras County is actually a story by Mark Twain." Oh, so I think you had in, I thought in they yesterday's were jumping frogs at the, the university. But I, the I, here's what I'm curious. Now you had. Do you, do you still have yesterday's lesson? No, I, I recycled that one. I'm good. Good 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 very good efficient. Yeah, helping year. Um, but I, I think he said it was like on this date, and wasn't it like in the I'd 18- love to help the earth. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Drinks up a styrofoam. Hey, not my fault. That's what they had at the gas station. <laughs> Sorry, earth. It was convenient. Yeah. <laughs> I'll reuse it. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah. But so in the Tucson history lesson, didn't it? But isn't it like. What, I thought was it was a like, leapfrog it, contest. But wasn't it like back in the 1890s? Yeah, it, was, yeah. it was a while ago. Right. Yeah. So I'm thinking that you were correct. It's not a correction. I think that there was 
that it was the first time. So it was a big celebrated frog jumping contest that that Mark Twain then later turned into a story. Uh, so, so that's Twain why this is not a off. correction. All right, then. he ripped it off. <laughs> Twain you old know, rip off artist <laughs> Twain, you know how Twain ripping is. things off like that. You comb your hair <laughs> today, right. May twentieth. Yes, please. It's be a millionaire day. Oh, okay. Well, remember then who on. wants to be a millionaire? Yeah, I do. When Regis was on, that was great stuff. And no. believe it or not, that was what ninety nine. You're a long way away. Yeah. Oh, check the tickets. I got a Powerball here. I'm gonna phone a friend. You uh, keep going. Me, I'm buddy. gonna find out if we're gonna if I'm gonna finish this show or not. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> if, I take, day. if I take off the microphones, just walk out the door. Take off the headphones, you're gone? Yeah. All right, it's know. flower day. What's your favorite flower? Uh, Indica? Hey, what the hell? Okay. Power. Yeah. My yeah. favorite oh. is flower power. Endangered species day. Right. Pick strawberries day. And world meteorology day. Oh. Celebrate those that tell us where the weather's going to be. Which like. is the, what the hell's going on in Michigan? Yesterday, yeah. two days ago, it's raining and you know fifty degrees. And now it's going to be like near eighty, and ninety, and, uh, or whatever today. And then tomorrow yeah, we're back we're to raining, rain. cold again. I don't know what's going on. Thirteen ten on this day. Thirteen ten, you back say? Thirteen ten. Footwear was made specifically for the right foot and the left foot well. for the first time. Before it was just ah, oh, just throw on your shoes. You don't know if they're on the right feet or not. Right. Did you ever have that guy in mm-hmm. elementary school that would always put his shoes on the wrong feet? Yeah, we had that guy. <laughs> you had that guy. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, actually, uh, I remember I was probably in like first grade, kindergarten. Yeah, first it's usually grade. in those. That, that my dad grade. actually wrote. He put a, a left. He put an L on my hand because I kept missing it. On he was uh, like, you all right, he just left from he went right. L and he put R and that actually fixed it. I was like, oh, oh, got it. Yeah. And I remembered it. And John walked around with his yeah. shoes on his feet. And his hands. <laughs> I'm like, is this, <laughs> is this it, Dad? I was like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Are you proud of me, Dad? <laughs> okay. okay. Well, some people, it took them a while to get the right from the left, and some of them don't know that when they put their turn signal well, this on. Is, this is true. 1939. Regular commercial transatlantic airline flights between America and Europe happened for the first time. Wow. 1939. So you could go to uh, Europe. Who wants to go to Europe? Huh? I'll go to Europe. Mavis Hutchinson, 1978. Mavis set a female sports record as the first woman to run across America. She ran 3,000 miles in 69 days, averaging about 49 mi- uh, 45 miles per day. That's impressive. That is impressive. I can't mean, I do 45 feet per day. You know, um. I think you're going to be here till the end of the show. Just checking. Just checking the lottery numbers. 93 million people in 1993. 93 million in 93. Tuned in for the final episode of Cheers. May 11. 23. 36. Go on. We'll see you till the end of the show. 1995. Don Henley from the Eagles married model Sharon Summerall. Hmm. Guests included Glenn Fry, Joe oh. Walsh, Timothy B. Schmidt, you did think. David Crosby, Randy Newman, Jimmy Buffett, Jackson Brown, Billy Joel, Sting, and the great Cheryl Crow. But not Don fan. Felder. No, Felder didn't go. Because Felder, they had the falling out. Yeah. Poor Felder. I wonder if they had a band at the wedding. <laughs> was it like the and DJ the guys wedding? are sitting around <laughs> going, like, this band sucks. This guy, they <laughs> suck. <laughs> Cheryl Crow was there. Cheryl, get on up there and sing a song. Probably talking about us. Oh, God, yeah. 2008. I can imagine. And that's how it's going to have to happen. We'll have to imagine it. (laughs) And it was on this day in 2008, the U.S. Congress passed a resolution designating on this May 20th, May 13th, as Frank Sinatra Day to honor his contribution to Mm. American culture. So you couldn't get that done before the 13th. Well, so no, they had to wait a whole year till well, they got yeah, to celebrate. They needed the time to, to build it up. and Sure. Yeah. I didn't even know what was going on at all. Yeah. Well, now you do. Now you do. See, May, what, what May year was 13, it? It was 2008. Okay. So this has been going on for this long. Yeah. And we didn't know this. Now you Frank do. Frank Sinatra Day. Aren't you old glad. blue eyes. Old blue eyes. Hat. He did it his way in New York. You still checking other numbers? Still here. That is your two cent history lesson for today. Don't gamble, kids. Some yes. <laughs> Not even on the over under and the parlay. No. Anything else like that. Yeah, so. so want to thank Murphy's Family Auto. 
You want to schedule an appointment today to make sure your summer traveling goes well. 517-552-3040. They're open on Saturdays, too, from 8 to 1 in case you work all week long. Schedule an appointment for Saturday between right. 8 and 1. Tell them Mike and John sent you. You get 5% off your bill. We That's call right. that the Mike and John bump. It's the Mike and John bump. Just, as a matter of fact, when you go in, just say, I want the Mike and John bump. And Do you want to show them what that looks like? The Mike and John. Yeah, stand up. We'll show them the Mike and John bump. Come on. Okay. Come on. Get up. You're, you're stuck on the show here. You didn't win the low. Damn it. Remember the bump in the 70s? Should have won. You know, Do the hustle. Oh, Come on. I'm Come not, on. I'm not bumping you. That's the Mike and John bump. All right, fine. There you have right. it. Our wives are so proud. Yeah. dot com. Yeah, and I'd like to say for the podcast audience, you're really glad you missed that. Yeah. You only heard it. You didn't <laughs> that, need to see it. That was classic stuff yeah. in 1977, doing <laughs> the bump. And that's the hustle. The junior high school gym at the dance. I remember. The bump. <laughs> yeah. Right. I remember the first dance, sixth grade. <laughs> Want to do the bump? Oh, I was going to have a high school dance. Are you going to dance? Are you going to dance with the girl? Oh, yeah. That day at school, you're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to dance yeah, with the girls. Oh, I'll be dancing with all the girls that night. Later on at the dance... Stay Guys over well. here, girls over <laughs> here. Everyone, you, go, oh, you know oh, what they oh. called our dances in junior high? They called them activity night. Ah, well, because yes. the gym would be open, so you could go shoot baskets oh, and so get all sweaty. Oh, no, and come yeah. back. You're already sweaty enough, so that didn't smell right. funny at all. Right, sure. Yeah. That really facilitated. Activity night. Well, wait, you went. Uh, and then we go to Big Boy after. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was, and if you yeah. paid for the girls, Big Boy, you were something. Oh, wow. Yeah. That overcame the smell. <laughs> <laughs> well, you stink, but you brought me a bonnie, brawny lad, so uh, no one ate that thing. <laughs> nobody ate, yes, nobody ate that thing. I was a big boy chef, yeah. and I can tell you nobody but nobody ate the damn brawny lad. It was just like a and it was on the menu, menu for God knows how many years, and I'm like, who eats this thing? Nobody. Nobody. That's, uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it was just basically a big boy hamburger. And pumper, oh, pumpernickel bun with a slice of onion. <laughs> it sounds Ooh. like a winner. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. 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 It's a brawny lad. lad. Oh, hello, brawny lad. So you got the cross between, well, right. basically paper towel <laughs> and a guy from England. Yeah. And we call it a brawny lad. It's the brawny lad. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a brawny lad. Well, you're quite brawny, oh, lad. That's you, a brawny you're having. Eat that pumpernickel bun that's dry as a sponge. <laughs> mm. And that big old slice of onion. Boy, that really brings the ladies around. <laughs> What do you put a little <laughs> Thousand Island dressing on that to add some flavor? Or <laughs> you had to moisture. do something. <laughs> that bun, man. <laughs> you know, I think we should wrap it up on the brawny you know, so. That's our show. We'll see you next week. Uh, you Mike sure? and John got it going. Are we renewed? Well, you didn't hit the lot. <laughs> so we're back. Yeah, I guess. I suppose we have. You know, if we invest company funds in lottery tickets, <laughs> business <laughs> expense, trying to advance the business. Or, Talk to our, our accountants aren't going to like that, but it is a fun idea. You've been giggling with Mike and John. Is that investing? Tune in next time no. and giggle. It's, investing. I mean, it's we're, bad investing. We're the company. We, we decide what we want to do. Yeah, we, we yeah. tell them what to do. Yeah. Where to go. <laughs> we tell ourselves where to go every day. <laughs> so you don't have to. All right. Oh, at post show. Yeah, it's post show time. Yeah. Post show time. Okay. What do you got? <gasps> Nothing. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to tell you more secrets of Big Boy? Is Big Boy chef? Yeah, let's learn some secrets about Big Boy. Okay. You know the Big Boy sauce. Well, uh, that's is that Spouse Island that? dressing. Oh, I revealed that in the Brawny Lad story you, you pre-show, yeah, yeah. pre-post-show. Uh, I'll just say this. You know, a right. couple of tips. All right. When you order the meat sauce for spaghetti. There's a good chance that that meat is a hamburger that either fell in the grease trap <laughs> or landed on the floor. Or landed on the floor. It was a floor burger. And you just kind of a floor so you throw it in the side thing. And as I recall, my, manager, spray off my manager, no? Doug, <laughs> Doug. Okay, this was 40 years ago, so we're not sure this still goes on. Yeah, no, no, I don't. I can only speak from my experience. Yeah. Uh, Doug had a little, like a metal, metal pan that he kept uh, on the back of the Doug. grill. Dumb. And if one fell on the floor, he just like flip it into the metal pan. Was he kind of like Brad in Fast kind Times? Of, yeah, kind of, yeah, 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 yeah. Just fed up with the job. Yeah, pretty much. Driving in his pirate suit. And then at the end of the shift, we'd have to pull out whatever hamburger bits or hamburgers <laughs> that fell into the grease trap. We'd pull them out and throw them into the, oh. the metal bin, which he would sterilize that meat. 
with grease. <laughs> <laughs> Grease sterilization. Right. Then we pull them That's out. That's why you see the Then we chop bubbles. it up, and we chop it up on the grill. Okay, so you, you were burning off the grease. Exactly. Yeah. You know. All right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And we chop it up, into, and then we mix it in with the spaghetti I've sauce. Never mm, I never had spaghetti yeah. meat yeah. at, uh, at just uh, letting you know. Big Boy. So I don't know what the statute of limitations is on health code violations. <laughs> I believe I'm past that. Was that so. the Big Boy in Troy? Or? It was, yes. Okay, so I don't, so don't go to the Big yeah, Boy Yeah, I don't think that one's there anymore. If it's still there, it hasn't burned down. Because so, <laughs> Doug was in charge. Thanks, Doug. <laughs> wow. Threw Doug under the bus. Yeah. I wonder what Doug's doing now. Wouldn't you like to look at You know, we have a kind of the Hall of Doug, Fame what, of restaurant managers. Yeah. 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 Don't tell Doug I stole these milk crates. Because <laughs> they look like they're that old. <laughs> they are. Yeah, that's where these came from. From Big Boy and Troy. So, yeah. All right. Just, you know. Yeah, give a shot. Give a shot. So, yeah. Right. To the people. Yeah. There's one there, right. and then under the table where sometimes I put There's my one feet. there. It's got a little paint on it. One over there. There you go. Those were all legally obtained from the back of the big boy when <laughs> no one was looking. They might be on sale at a garage sale just, run by Bonnie. I think Rooney I pulled up and I'm like, throw them in, throw them in. Yeah, yeah. Ah! Yeah, we used to store records in those, take yeah. stuff up to school, right. you know. Yeah, one of those books. was for records, and the other two were for books. No. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Really? Two yeah. for books? Yeah, two for books. Okay. Two well, because they were easier to carry. Yeah. So, the books are heavy. Yeah, they were. Now, now they're selling those for top dollar at Bed Bath and Beyond. <laughs> they're the, cheaper the, plastic, the, though. Well, yeah, they're not. These the are quality. Solid. These are solid. Farm made. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Seal test and everything else. Somebody make me an offer on these milk crates. Maybe a two fifty for all three. <laughs> Deal. 